right, so I'm super excited to be here with Peter. Uh, <clears throat> Peter and Tune are great, great partners uh, to Button. We work on many common, common customers together. Uh, and I'd love for, for Peter to, to really tell the audience here um, your origin story. Uh, I think that's always one of the most exciting things about a, a you know, technology company. What's your origin story and why do you guys exist? That's a good question. Uh, well, I have two partners that are absolute maniacs. Um, they are identical twin brothers and the most tenacious, insane technologists you're ever going to spend any time with. I met them when they were 23 years old. They'd made their first million in ad publishing when they were sophomores in the dormitories uh, at Babson College. Um, and they are just machines. Um, so of course I wanted to do business with these guys. <laughs> and uh, I, I had the good fortune of, uh, of working with them for about a month before even they decided, oh, we want to be in a, in a SaaS company. We want to build technology for others that they can build on, they can rely on. Um, and, uh, and of course, I was excited about that. I love the idea of recurring revenue. Um, that's the most amazing thing about SaaS, if you don't know. <laughs> and, uh, and really, um, it was off to the races. Uh, we produced our first product uh, in a few months. We gave it away for free, as you usually do. Um, and we had thousands of people sign up for it, and we had no idea what to do with that. Uh, we just started building, 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 more features, more features, you know, <laughs> let's hold on to this thing, and then, oh wait, we need to charge for it. How are we gonna do that? <laughs> um, and we, uh, yeah, we did eventually charge for it, so yay us. Um, so you guys generate revenue. <laughs> we generate revenue, uh, yeah, and uh, we were profitable in the first year, and then that really allowed us to look out over our skis and think about you know, how can we really impact uh, the marketing industry uh, and connect marketers and partners in a better way? And it just so happened in, you know, around 2011, mobile became a thing. And it was complicated and people didn't really know what to do with it. And so uh, we decided to launch a product specifically targeting measurement of performance on mobile. And, uh, and for the first year, no one used it uh, for the most part. <laughs> Typical <startup laughs> But we story. knew it was coming. This mobile economy was coming for sure. Um, and especially uh, my partner, Lucas, he was so bullish. And he just pushed and pressed on it. And we, we saw like tiny little early signs that maybe in-app purchases were going to be a thing. And people were going to buy things through apps. And if that was the case, then maybe pe marketers were going to try to get people to go to apps to buy things. Um, and yeah, once we got to uh, late 2012, that picked up. It started happening. It exploded, yeah. And of course, we all know that it exploded first with games. And, uh, and games were, uh, it was a very exciting time because so many were entering so fast and trying to amass these users you know, that are going to hi have high lifetime value, that are going to be their whales, right? Um, and a lot of people were making a lot of money through that. And, uh, and that was a great way to build technology because it was high scale, it was high stakes. You know, you have to get everything right. And, uh, and so we learned a lot through all of that. And then I would say over this last year has been sort of this big transition of moving into big retail and commerce. Yeah, I'd love to talk a little bit about that. So, um, you know, Tune is no longer a startup. Uh, you, you folks have, have really crossed the chasm and really are a significant enterprise company at this point. Would love to learn a little bit about you know, crossing the chasm and what are some of the key indicators that you guys think about um, you know, as you shift from serving you know, not only sort of pure technology companies but some of the Fortune 500 companies out there. Yeah, one thing that had to change for us um, is, is sort of focusing as a point solution to solve very narrow things, uh, maybe just specifically just for attribution for specific advertising channels into thinking about the whole funnel and how that whole funnel is impacted by these mobile marketing activities. And that meant we needed more products, we needed more solutions for you know, every piece of that funnel. We started to do some acquisitions. Uh, so we made three acquisitions in about a year and a half time. And if any of you have ever made acquisitions or been a part of an acquisition, you know that the integration part is super fun. Uh, and it takes some time, you know? You have to <laughs> really, really bring these people into the fold, make them a part of your culture. You have to, you know, have a tight enough and intact enough vision that everyone's like rowing in the same direction, you know? Um, so over that, over that year or so uh, was really the march toward creating the Tune Marketing Console. Um, you know, and you always wonder if those visions are ever actually gonna come about. 
Um, but, uh, but we were able to accomplish that and bring it to market. And it really is an enterprise solution now because it covers you know, from top to the bottom of the funnel, but everything is really, it's one database, right? It's one place where you are looking at your mobile audience, your mobile consumers, you're figuring out how to bring more of those in, and you're figuring out how to make those you know, as efficient as possible. Awesome, so now that you are sort of a true enterprise stack and as you look forward, I'd love to know kind of what are some of the most interesting things happening in mobile today? Uh, and where is the growth going to come from in the mobile economy? And how can you serve that growth? Sure. Um, where do I start? Three questions there, sorry. Yeah, I will start. I'll start with just one of the most interesting things that's happening. Um, is everyone's familiar with the, the walled gardens, right? Uh, the, the big advertising platforms that basically own a, a significant portion of the inventory and also sell to a si significant portion of the demand. Mm -hmm. um, and these folks, they're competing heavily with each other, you know, Google, Facebook, um, you know, Twitter, all these folks are, are, you know, really competing for the same demand. At the same time, they're having their own supply problems um, because the supply has to be easily reachable, easily targetable, has to have a lot of scale, right? And all of these platforms, everyone has a limited number of people that, that are in their audience. Um, so I think, you know, one of the things that is happening and that will continue to happen through 2017 is that we'll have a supply problem in our industry, more so than a demand problem. Because the other trend that's happening is that big retail is coming in, mm -hmm. the Fortune 500 are coming in, uh, they've watched the mobile first, and now they're entering what we call mobile best. And they're taking all their learnings and everything they knew from the web. They're starting to combine that, too, with an app strategy that focuses on retention and engagement. And they have big, big, big dollars. And they're not, they're not dummies. They know how to enter this market now. I would say the really great thing about Adweek is sort of watching that evolution. You know, two years ago, we we're not really having these kinds of conversations yeah. with, with the big Fortune 500. And now everyone has like a campaign they're doing, you know, partners they're working with, agencies they brought on board, right? It's all, this momentum is all starting to happen. And so these dollars are coming in, there's no doubt. Um, but making sure those dollars can match up with really effective supply is gonna be an issue for our industry. Absolutely. Um, Moving to sort of connections, which is the theme of, of today, uh, you know, Button obviously works on connecting apps and services together and focusing on the user experience. Uh, would love to talk a little bit about how Tune helps you know, different services, apps, uh, and brands on mobile um, work together and develop connections. Yeah, I think something um, that's a little bit unique about our DNA is in, in our early days, we were building technology for performance marketing you know, for people to manage hundreds or thousands of publishers and affiliates. So we're literally building technology for networks, um, the supply. And now we are also building technology for marketers, the demand. So something that's unique is that because we have technologies that we're building on both sides, we understand the problems that are happening for both sides, the, the lack of transparency, the issues of discrepancies. Anyone heard that word in this industry? <laughs> Um, the last week, maybe? Yeah, I keep saying I wanna, I wanna make a t-shirt for our support people that says like solving discrepancies since 2009, right? That's a, yeah. this should be a motto. Um, but it, it definitely creates an opportunity for us to help create that workflow that just makes life a little bit easier between partners and marketers. And really that's what we've tried to do with you guys with Button, um, whether it's with OpenTable or Uber, yep. or these folks that um, are needing to be interconnected with their partners and the partners that you guys are bringing to the table, right? So that, you know, the consumer experience is, of course, uh, you know, streamlined, but also it's measured. Exactly. And we know, like, what's, how, how effective is this partnership and where is it going? Unquestionably. Um, as we look forward uh, into 2017, uh, you know, would love to know, you know, what's top of mind for you, particularly given your purview into, you know, hundreds, thousands, I think, of the leading mobile brands. What's top of mind for them and what's top of mind for you uh, in the mobile ecosystem uh, over the next 12 to 18 months? I'll go with two quick things. Um, number one, there's certainly a, a convergence of technology around ad tech and martech. Uh, these two things have been really separated for a very long time. 
Um, you know, you look at the big marketing clouds, uh, and certainly they're, they're solving the first party marketing activities, you know, whether it's, you know, email or in-house campaigns, and they're connecting to some of maybe the largest channels, but in terms of being fully connected to advertising and allowing people to really work with all of their ad tech partners, whether those are networks or DMPs or whoever these are, like making sure the data gets where it needs to go, ad tech and martech need to see a convergence o over that time. So obviously you're gonna hear me bang that drum all the time. And you, would you say that you see almost an over attribution to organic uh, today? <laughs> That's a whole other ball game, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's, uh, it, it can go both ways. It uh -huh. gets sliced both ways. There are certainly places where big platforms are, are you know, taking credit for lots of that organic, right? Yeah. And, and the reverse, right? So, yep. um, you know, let's just, let's just get that transparency going because really, in, in talking to a lot of CMOs this week, really what they want is, a, is just for their teams to get along. Like my inbound organic team and my paid team, they need to have, when they have a meeting together, they need to not be warring over, well, that was, no, that was paid. No, that was organic, you know? Um, and there needs to just be great technology for both to depend on so that they can unify their strategies. And the last thing I'll leave you with is uh, there's, there needs to also be a connection between routing and measurement. So you guys know deep links and universal links and these things that help connect uh, the consumer once they've clicked an advertisement or some marketing engagement and they move on to an app or a website. There needs to be simpler ways for us to make sure that routing happens the way it needs to go so the customer lands in the exact place that they should land, but also at the same time measurement happens exactly as it should happen and that both sides on either side of that link, right, know exactly what happens. So, over the next year, I think uh, you'll see a lot of technologies come to the forefront of, of this entire industry that have been able to solve that problem. Uh, there are some folks that have solved it really well so far, but it's gonna keep evolving and the platforms are gonna keep changing and we have to stay on top of routing and measurement. And we will do everything in our power at Button to work on that with you very closely <laughs> to make it easier for our partners, our customers, Absolutely. Uh, and the audience. Well, yeah. uh, thank you, Peter. It was uh, you. wonderful. Thank wonderful you very much. Chatting. All right, cheers. All right.